So what is new media? The definitions are pretty elusive, but it's not just about a bunch of new devices. People use the term to mean many things, but one way I like to think about it is that it's an idea about the way we communicate. It's about on-demand access to content anytime, anywhere, on any digital device, as well as about interactive user feedback, creative participation, and community formation around media content. It's an idea that says we should be in direct communication, two-way communication, with anyone and everyone. It's an idea about sharing and interacting. It's an idea about many-to-many -many communication, rather than the top-down one-to-many model we've been used to. It's an idea about sharing across and amongst many groups. New media, then, is the idea of sharing and the media that allows this to happen. So what has changed to make all of this possible? It's not just a change in the equipment we're using, although that's a, a big part of it, but it's a much bigger change that's changing our culture altogether. I kind of think of it as three major changes, although there are obviously more things playing into this. The first is the idea of cloud computing. Now, cloud computing is a natural result of improvements in our data speeds and fast, faster microprocessors. As speed becomes faster and faster, and as we're able to process more and more data, it's become possible to actually do our computing with applications that aren't installed on our own computers. And this is just the beginning. Nicholas Carr, who wrote uh, the article, Is Google Making Us Stupid?, and uh, numerous books and other, other articles about technology, explains it in a way that makes it really easy to understand this revolution that's going on. In the early days of electricity, every business had to generate its own electricity, and every business had at least one technician charged with keeping tr the generator running, because if the generator broke down, the business was sunk. But then advances in the design of electrical transmission and electrical motors made it possible to deliver electricity from a central location. And that meant they could deliver to many locations from one central utility. And that meant they could capitalize on the economies of scale. It became so inexpensive to purchase electricity from these utilities that no one had to be in the business of generating their own electricity. They could just plug into the grid. Today, we simply take this for granted. If we want electricity, we plug into an outlet. Now, a similar change has been happening um, in computing. With the increased power of microprocessors and increased data storage capacities, companies are beginning to offer computing over the grid, the internet. We just plug into the grid, the cloud, where everything is stored on computers around the world, and we can access all sorts of information and programs. And it's just beginning. It's getting so cheap and so fast that soon we won't need computers to run our, compu our programs or store our data. We'll just need an interface, something to connect us with the cloud. The little netbooks we're seeing are just the beginnings. Now another change is the technology that allows us to interact online. Web 2.0, which is sometimes called the read-write web, refers to this technology that allows new media to take hold. Our new web no longer limits us to simply posting information online. It now allows us to interact with both content and with other people. So instead of communicating on the web, we now communicate through the web. It's become a conduit. There are thousands of Web 2.0 tools available online now. You're familiar with many of them. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. And in addition, there are it's many um, full applications, similar to what we used to buy and install on our own computers. And these tools have made it possible for everyone and anyone not only to consume information online, but con to contribute. It opens the doorway to two-way communication with our visitors. It makes it possible for people to share, to compose, to teach, and more online. And a third big change is this idea of social media or social networking. It's the idea of people socializing and communicating through a variety of media. This is our current reality. Young people today, and more and more even old people, like me, are communicating, almost exclusively sometimes, through social media of one kind or another. They post status updates and links on Facebook. They share links and cap catch up on news on Twitter. They post pictures on Flickr, videos on YouTube. They write blogs and websites. They share and share and share. They share links to inf interesting information. They share videos. They share ideas. They teach one another. 
Ideas can spread like wildfire. One person posts, 10 friends pass it on, and their 10 friends pass it on again. It's like the old pyramid scheme, only this time it works. That's why videos can go viral and end up with more than a million hits the first week after they're posted. If they're interesting, they spread through this vast network at lightning speed. And more and more people are accessing this network through mobile devices, connected to this vast network of information anywhere, anytime. Now, a part of this um, idea of sharing has resulted in a change in the way we think about copyright. And what has happened is something called Creative Commons, which is a new copy left license aimed at flexible handling of copyright protection for all kinds of creative work. It's part of this whole idea of sharing and collaborating and interacting. As you know, you can't just grab any photo or piece of music and publish it as your own. Any creative work is automatically copyrighted when it's created. Within this copyright protection, it's not legal for us to use anything without written permission. Finding pictures and music through a Google, Google search will bring back all sorts of pictures and music that we cannot use legally. Recently, however, there's been a new movement taking place called Creative Commons, something some people call copyleft. Many artists and musicians have recognized that they want to share their work, and they don't want to have to deal with written permission. So they've attached a Creative Commons license to their work that releases some of their rights. You can recognize Creative Commons licenses when you see some of the symbols here. The license says essentially that you can use the work without asking under specific conditions. There's different levels of permissions, different Creative Commons licenses. Some of them allow you to remix the work, but only for non-commercial purposes. Others make no requirements on how you use them. Most, however, ask that you give attribution and that you provide the same Creative Commons license on your own derivative works. That's called a share-alike license. So all of these things are working together. The idea of sharing and collaborating and interacting online. The technology that allows us to do this, both the Web 2.0 software and the devices through which we connect. And the reality that millions of people are already online networking. All of this provides us with new possibilities in the ways we can and should communicate. The environment and the tools make this possible.